Hello, welcome back. Apps and Logan are here again. This time we're doing a review on My Friend Pedro, which is an interesting game title. Apps, how are you doing? Good, thanks you. Yep, good. Here we are doing our favourite thing, reviews informally. Two old friends sitting round uh, the proverbial table. What's the what's the phrase? Chopping, chapping. Chatting. Oh, I can't remember. No, it's like when you you just there's like a phrase for when you just like talking bollocks, shooting the breeze. Can't fucking remember. Oh, I've just got my toe caught on the back of a fucking printer there. You don't want to do that. It's gone the wrong way. That is. Anyway, I'll think. I'll think about that phrase. It's going to bother me, and I'll use it on the next, uh, the next edition. That's the breadcrumb of... to listen to next time. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing now. We're leaving trails of breadcrumbs to to get people to to come back. But <laughs> anyway, this time round, we're looking at my friend Pedro, which is um, kind of come out of nowhere. Really, I, I kept hearing it, and I thought that's a ridiculous title of a game not really having any appreciation for what it was and i was on the old uh, tube of you and um i come across a video and I, it said oh my friend pedro i thought oh i'll see what that is and it was absolutely fuck all like what i expected it to be <laughs> um it was, it's it's an incredibly misleading title but yeah um in, where did you pick this game up then and uh how did you find out about it and decide to to play it that's a good question. Um, I saw the only reason I was interested in this is because I saw a trailer of it. Um, I believe it was at the, on at some point during twenty in twenty eighteen. At some point, I don't know if it was at E three or whether it was at one like a, a Nindy, like a Nintendo Direct. Yeah, one one of those two. But either way, I just saw the trailer watching these fucking conferences like I do. And I thought, oh, that looks like good fun. I'll keep my eye on that. Um, so I did. I sort of left, left it and kept an eye on it. Found out it was coming out in the summer of 2019. And um, take a, took a quick look at the aggregate score on the reviews to make sure it wasn't like 40 or something like that. And was like, okay, it looks like it's doing all right. Let's, let's delve in. And um, <clears throat> got it on the Switch. Went down the oh, Nintendo Switch. You can get it on um, PC. But I went for the Switch because I felt like it. It felt like a Switch game to me. Yeah, I can I can understand that from what I saw. Um, so let's talk the guys through and girls. Could yeah. be um, guys was kind of a metaphorical grouping of people. I anyway. say that all the time at work, even if there's females or those that identify as females, in they get referred to as guys. Yeah, you have to be careful. Um, I haven't been told off for it yet, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're right. You, you have got to be careful. But to me, it's not. I never treat it as a male thing. It's just like a group of humans. That's what I do with it. But you know, there's a presumption now that if you address it, you know, you can get you can get labelled incorrectly. Is where I'm going with it. And you need to, you know, be 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 watching out for these these vegans that come after you for that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Need to be careful, or oh, we're <laughs> comments like that losing viewership. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love the way that <laughs> these link back to something. Even if only you and I appreciate them, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this you know, if nobody knows anything about my friend Pedro, and you said that, I mean, you'd be thinking it's saying to do. You know, Pedro's a a Mexican name, really, for Paul, or a Spanish name, should I say, for Paul? Mexican, unfair. Is it? Uh, yeah. No, oh. that's Pablo. Fucked it. Jesus, that definitely Nazi tendencies now. It's uh, it's Spanish for Peter. Pee wee. I've made that up. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Someone will find out what Pedro. It, it might even just be that he's, the ped, the name is Pedro, and that's it. There's no. No, I don't think there is. I think it's just Pedro. Oh, but it, a little fact is that Pablo is uh, is Paul in Spanish. I mean, I, I use fact loosely, but anyway, 
So to someone that hasn't picked this game up before, or might not have seen anything, how do you explain my friend Pedro and its and its story and its what it's actually offering? They're saying it is Peter. Is it? That's what they're claiming. Pedro is the Spanish, Portuguese and Galician name of for Peter. Its French equivalent is Pierre. Or the English yes. and Germanic so, form is Peter. I knew that I knew that Pierre in French was Peter. I knew that Pablo in Spanish is Paul. But I didn't know. I just guessed that Pedro might be Peter in Spanish. Yeah. So if you Google it. So is is Pedro Spanish? Oh, look, first result for Peter. A masculine name, given name Pedro, is a Spanish, Portuguese and Galician. Galician? Yeah, Galician? I don't know what that is, not. Name Gaelic, right, okay, yeah, that's fair enough. Gaelician, I don't know how you just say the plural, for Peter. Spanish, Germanic form is Peter. Name Peter is a translation of the Aramic Kephas, or Kephas meaning stone. There you go. Right, that's it. Pee Wee is now going to be called Pedro. Pedro, done. Yeah. So, my friend Peter. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing here so give the guys blown it again give the audience the viewership a rundown of uh, of this game and what you know where at. I saw it now I think it's at the Devolver Digital E3 conference because it's published by them yeah so I was just looking at that and I thought this was an indie game but it's not really because <laughs> it's published by well Devolver they are a it, the word indie's dead now. It's not. It, it ain't people just self-publishing anymore. There's normally some sort of, you know, help. And Devolver Digital specialise in publishing indie games. But some people will argue that as soon as you someone's got a publisher, um, it's not an indie game. But I tend to look at it in the fact that it's just created by either individuals or smaller development teams without the support of a large publisher. Um, in contrast to like triple a games but you know devolver yep. lent their hand they've got they're only small themselves but they've they've got a good portfolio of games like hotline miami you were speaking about uh, last time out that's um that's a, a devolver publish a devolver Di- digital published game so they've got some good stuff in their in their portfolio for sure but sorry i, I you know derailed it again no, you you <laughs> you were getting there. So so what we're looking for, what it is, is what it is. <laughs> what is? We're looking for the ba- the real basics. What is my friend Pedro? <laughs> it's hard to really. It's too. I'd say it's, so. It's, I, I the way that I would describe this game is it's it's a it's a proper it's a proper video game. Mm. That's uh, and I know what I mean by that, but. It, it, it doesn't. It's, it's designed to be fun and to be slightly tongue in cheek. Yeah, it is. It's it's so essentially it's a two D game. Let's get that out of the way. It's like a, I don't know if it's a two D point five or what people call it. I don't really yeah. get into any of that. But two D game. So I do Yeah, you're controlling this fellow with a mask on who's who's got guns. You start off with pistols. You can find Uzis, shotguns. Uh, assault rifles and other bits and pieces along the way. So you, you, you have guns. You can dual wield uh, at this point, so you can aim two different ways. Um, so the fella's got a mask on. Looks like a sort of a knockoff or a cheap knockoff, a Deadpool a little bit <clears throat> with the eyes in that. And <clears throat> you essentially it's a it's a two D shoot 'em up really. You traverse through the level going from left to right and up and down a little bit and the aim of the game is to get from one side of the level to the other whilst killing and shooting people along your way I guess the twist is that the that there's multipliers applied for each kill you make so actually what you want to try and do is not just get through the level but also score highly so you're scored at the end of each level or round or whatever you want to call it based on the speed in which you complete it the difficulty level you have on um, and how many people you kill and also how many points you accumulate and a quick way to accumulate points is to kill people in quick succession and not let your multiplayer a multiplier fail um, and you've got a few tools that can help you do that because there is sometimes tons of enemies on screen and the main um, 
mechanic really is bullet time or focus as I think they call it in this which basically slows down time so you can you know see incoming bullets and dodge them and aim a bit more you know accurately and and that's really the aim of the game there is a there is a really loose narrative which is complete nonsense but it doesn't pretend to be anything else so it's not harming anyone it's not you know, you're not sitting there trying to, you know, pull on your heartstrings. It knows what it's doing. It's a, it's a, it's a light-hearted, like you said, tongue-in-cheek tale that you'll go through, um, and it fits with the over-the-top, gory, brutal gameplay that sometimes occurs. So, the way that I would describe it is, um, my friend Pedro is a violent ballet about friendship, <laughs> imagination, and one man's struggle to obliterate anyone in his path at the behest of a sentient banana. The strategic use of split aiming, slow motion, and the old stylish window breach create one sensational action sequence after another, an explosive battle through the violent underworld. I mean, that's directly off steam, so that's probably exactly what's um, how you would you know, well, describe well, the game. I mean, ad lib, so mm, that's made it up. Mm, interesting. <laughs> Got it in front of me. <laughs> Well, coincidence is what I'd say. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, that sums it up nicely. That's, I mean, I watched, what, I think I watched about half an hour of gameplay on it. and That's um, hell. It's near the whole game. Yeah, it's not very long. <laughs> and for some reason I got to it and I went, ah, I'm done with that now. It might have been 20, it might have been a bit less than that. It might have been about 20 minutes or something. I can't yeah. quite remember. I watched a fair bit and I kind of just decided I'd seen enough. For it's some not reason, one, it's fun to watch for a little bit. That's what because obviously when I saw the trailer initially, I was drawn in. I was like, "Oh, this is good," but I can't imagine just watching it. You'd be you tune out eventually because you can't really. The, 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 there's an art to the game that you can only really get if you put your hands on the controller and start playing the bastard. So I can see why, as a stream game or as a game that you're watching someone else, after a while you'd probably get pretty sick of watching it but to play it does it's got a lot more substance about it yeah I wouldn't say I don't know if I got bored I just sort of thought there's got to be something more interesting that's good for watching if that makes sense rather than playing it definitely looked like a game that I went that looks like it's probably fun to play but for me sitting here it ain't a backseat kind of game that I can I can appreciate or get into that's scrubbed Um, off the stream list then yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, the thing is, it's harmless because it's not very long. Um, so it, but when I, I wasn't actually watching it on stream, I was watching it um, on YouTube. So it's a guy that records his stream and puts it on YouTube. And because I know I can just go off elsewhere, I'm not saying else. It's kind of like, right, what else has he got that I haven't watched yet? Rather than sitting here watching him trying to get the best multiplier on that, I was sort of a bit like, I don't really care. I'd rather go and watch him get obliterated on Hotline Miami. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the decision I made there. But it, I could understand it, and it looked. I, I quite liked the the the, the tongue in cheek nature of it, and I can understand why some of the you know set pieces might be quite interesting to get um, get sort of nailed down to a T. But um, yeah, it, it looked like it was an interesting game. It looked like a. You know, I like games nowadays because everything's so serious, isn't it? You know, you got you got to go and eat, otherwise you're going to get cold or hot, and it's just like, <laughs> oh fuck off! And like, let me play something that's just fun, and this seemed like that sort of game. So I, I find them quite refreshing every now and again. Mm. And this is what it was. It was refreshing. It took, you know, it's not a long game. I think it took me in the region of maybe just over four hours to to finish it one time through but that, the, the aim of the game is to go back and perfect your scores so that mm. i mean that's where to be honest for me that's where the interest kind of stopped I, i'm not really into you know trying to get better scores in games like this um uh, so that didn't really appeal to me too much but i still enjoyed my first run through and i can see myself just going back to this and maybe playing for half an hour to do a few levels and being a bit more advanced obviously towards the back end of the game you, you feel like you're getting better at the game and just going through some of the earlier levels and trying to just do like one seamless multiplayer with multiplier sorry would be um would be something i'm interested in trying but um a lot of the the depth i suppose people will get from the game is trying to beat scores and maybe if you're interested in those leaderboards that's that's there for for people as well 
Yeah, so I guess we've kind of touched on it. Um, you know, you, you, you kind of 2D, you go through the levels and, and move your way up. But, you know, the art style and the graphics, uh, from what I remember, pretty, I wouldn't say impressive, but they were, they're good for a 2D side on. Yeah. Oh. It's stylized, it's nice and coloured. You know, when you shoot, blow someone's head off, it blows off. And yeah, I think the they've done a good job of it because. You know, it fits the the atmosphere of the game, really. We talked about it being light-hearted and fun and, and all that good stuff. And the art style is, is, is that as well. It's light-hearted, colourful. The levels and the zones are pretty different from one another. And there's kind of a blend between full sort of like combat levels and a little bit of platforming as well. So there's some areas that require a little bit of that. Mm. Um, and yeah you've got a, a, variety, a variety of different weapons to choose from and whatnot. but I like the locations I like the, the, the look of the game and it ran pretty pretty well as on, on the old Switch as well because when you, whenever you get anything on that Switch you've always got to be just a bit wary about performance <laughs> because yeah you know it ain't got a lot of grunt it ain't got a lot of grunts I'm saying that everything I've played on there has played well I don't think I've had anything yet where I've gone Mm. but I deliberately only play one game every three months on it um, and they're normally carefully selected so yeah um. I'd be interested to play like you know I know they've got Doom on there and I think Wolfenstein yeah. like one of those games just to see well the biggest one is The Witcher isn't it that's come in I can't believe it. I can't believe that I mean to be fair I don't know comparatively how poor the the, the the hardware is on it I haven't actually looked into it because it's just not my problem um, <laughs> but it doesn't matter does it as long as it plays on there and there's yeah. good games I don't really care but it'd be interesting to see the, the difference in I mean when you look at the size of that Xbox and what's under there or the Playstation compared to the size of uh, the Switch obviously naturally there's there's quite a downgrade there yeah. uh, but I don't be knowing how that's going to play The Witcher yeah, no. I mean, hands-on seem pretty positive, so it might actually be a viable way to do it for people. Um, be interesting, but that's, I mean, this game itself though isn't a problem for the Switch. I guess is what I'm no. trying to say. Like, it's not yeah. gonna, ain't gonna push the hardware. It's not. It's not simplistic by any means. There's still a lot going on, especially in the when the levels get a bit more advanced and there's more enemies. But mm. the Switch can handle it, so not a problem. There you go, tick in the box for the Switch, and obviously a PC shouldn't have any problem saying that, though. This laptop would probably struggle, so wow. that's what we're dealing with. I, I reckon you should give it a go, and then just play like an hour, and then <laughs> if it ain't running, Steam refund it. It ain't. Well, just it, it can, it does just need for my own amusement, really, now. <laughs> so if we can get that organised. I don't know you. what it would run, like, seamlessly now. Genuinely, I don't. I don't think there's many games out there that it would run seamlessly, mm. which is appalling. Really, it just about runs Skype and the internet at the same time. <laughs> Bless it. Um, anyway, so I, I guess moving on from that, I've, did I, am I right in thinking that it's got a good, bloody good soundtrack, or have I made that up? No, yeah, that's that's another mm. positive. The soundtrack is is fits perfectly with the action and the and what's going on it's uh it's great so all, all the sound really if you to consider like you know the sound design and the the soundtrack itself how the how that it's dynamic between whether you're in action or you're out of action it's yes yeah, great it's um they've done a lot of things right with this in areas that most games don't even try and get right because i think maybe because it is a bit of a simplistic idea in theory they've put effort into the other areas that they, they know they can make a difference and it does make a difference when you're playing through a game that's that feels this polished and feels um, and sounds and is, is, is a good overall video game package. Yeah, I think that's a good point actually is from what I saw of it, we talk about being an indie game or, or from a, sm a smaller studio and it, it's got a lot of polish or it, it felt to me like it's got a lot of polish. Like there's normally things on these games that you go... Hmm, that don't look that, right. That don't look right. Or there's things that you can visibly see that they've just kind of gone. That will do a little bit because they ain't got all the time in the world to sit there perfecting it. But in 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 most ways and almost every way, it kind of looks like they've, as you say, it's not breaking um, breaking barriers down. But what it does do is it, it, it's set out to do really well. 
yeah, yeah. There's no there's no complaints on that front at all. I think the the presentation and the performance and the other bits that go into those sort of areas are um, are really good. So hats off to those those guys at Dead Toast Entertainment. So one question I do have: Do you think it would have been better? not playing it so i presume you played it in handheld mode well this is what this is what cheating been, been clever in i because i don't know i don't know about half and half half in handheld half right. with the old pro controller didn't play with the joy cons not attached um don't know why i didn't do that to be quite honest because i've not done it for a while i've been mean to try that more often because the theory is that actually the video game controls we've been using for the last 25 years are great, but the Switch gives us an option to sort of just put our hands wherever we want so they haven't got to be locked forward and you haven't got to have your elbows poking out. Oh, so it feels so unnatural. No, it does, but if you can just get used to it. I remember playing Zelda and just sort mean? of lounging no, with my arm up in the air. I can't get used to it because will. then when I go back to play anything on the other two bloody consoles... It'll ruin it. It'll That's ruin it. Well, they need to up the game then. Where these detachable elite <laughs> controllers for two hundred and fifty pounds that Hall can get. So that's that. But I played it in both. Is the short answer. But I played right. it with the uh, pro controller, and I think this is this for me is where my friend Pedro has tripped over itself slightly. Is in the control department. There is a lot that you can. In theory, do you know? You slow down time, roll, reload, select your gun, split aim. So I sympathise with what they've tried to do. The fact that it's got so many different options that you need to be thinking about any one time that it's hard to make it feel simple or intuitive, should I say? And this is a game where you need to get a rhythm going. Like I stopped for two weeks, maybe. This this was actually part of that sort of rut period was talking about with Rise of the Tomb as uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider mm. this was started a few weeks after that so it got it got snarled up in the rut right. which was not ideal for it but when I came back after two two maybe three weeks off fuck me I couldn't play it <laughs> because it didn't feel it, it had all I'll say is it's got its own way of controlling that you need to be at one with it's not that sort of game that you pick up a year later and go oh, I remember how to play this you'll be fumbling Right. You'll be fumbling all over the place. But once you've got into the rhythm, it's not so bad. Mm. But I, I, for me, that's a little bit of a... What well, is a bit of... That is a negative for me because had it been something you can just pick up at any time, like trials, I'm not going to forget how to play that. Sure, it's a lot more simple. Well, I don't know about those extremes. But <laughs> you know that when you pick up that controller, what's going to happen? Whereas I've not played this for probably 10 days now. If I go back and play it tonight, I, I'm going to struggle a little bit for the first sort of... 10 15 minutes until I get into a rhythm, I think. And I'm still undecided on whether that's the game's fault or whether that's actually how the game should be. You know, maybe it is a bit of a mm. rhythm game, but it didn't feel natural in its native form of controls. And who knows, I could have remapped some of the buttons, but my biggest gripe really was the fact the slowdown button, so the bullet time or the focus, whatever you want to call it, is enabled and disabled by clicking in the left analog stick which i don't know about you but i naturally seem to do that when i t turn the thing or push the thing so if i'm just going to go left to right mm. i will accidentally click that stick in loads of times and most games you don't notice because it's not mapped to anything yeah. but in this it's mapped to your key tool so i kept bloody running into slow down mode but i didn't want to and turning it off when i didn't want to <laughs> and i thought right that's annoying me now <laughs> uh, <laughs> It feels slightly cruel to to give them a a black mark for controls, but saying that, I think it's right to do so. It's, it's any game that gives you too much to think about and too you can't basically you're filling up all the all the control um, buttons. There's yeah. too much going on. If you're having to click in those, it, I don't, I can't think of a of a game that I've played where the, it relies on you clicking the left one. Sometimes on the right, um, sprint on some of those FPSs, aren't they? Clicky lefty. -ins. There's some real shit. So some some of them that I've played, it's click and hold a button down. Yeah. But that's okay yeah. because you're doing that. 
and that is your movement button anyway. Um, but it's like imagine trying to sprint and that being your aim button, for example, like or your aim side. It'd just be a nightmare. Mm. Um, there's times even on some of the games where right clicking right analog stick is to swipe your gun uh to sorry to swipe your knife like to knife yeah. someone yeah and you're, you're in the middle of battle you're trying to aim and you'd start knifing because you panicked or whatever and it's just like oh fuck off i hate those click analog fucking <laughs> controls they're bollocks it really is a load of old shit um yeah. but i think that's a symptom of carrying over too much because you've got a keyboard in front of you that has got about 50 keys on it i think it's a symptom of having 50 keys and trying to move that down into about 12 buttons yeah it's not i mean it's one of those situations where actually hall's elite control would be really useful because if you remapped the the focus or the bullet time button to those triggers on the back then there's no problem there that's like a perfect place yeah but you say that but when you're fucking holding it all you're doing is constantly flipping them triggers on the bottom well you might i had to take them off how did you well i've not played with one to be fair but no well hall says they're fine but he would because he's it's xbox and he paid 200 quid for the controller (laughs) he ain't gonna slag it off is he no he ain't gonna admit that's a waste of money (laughs) (laughs) yeah i don't know whether to i I can't make my mind up really because it's could I have remapped the controls potentially and made it easier? That feeds back into what you said, where it's like, I'll play it as you give it to me and judge it on that. So yeah, that it has true. to be judged by that standard if you're setting it. Yeah, that is very true. I do, And that's why I kind of do it, so that I don't have to worry about resetting. If I'm playing F1 and I need to win a race, I'll probably remap it if it's causing me problems. Mm. But for action games, it's like, I'll take it as it is. It's how you said the best way is to have it, so... If it ain't right, I'll be telling you about it. If it didn't work, you should have sorted that out before you gave me the default mapping. It's basically yeah. the premise, which I don't disagree yeah. with. No. Um, so I guess uh, I don't know if there's anything we haven't touched on that you think's relevant, but is there any other business on my friend Pedro? Um, I don't think so. I think it's... I've kind of said one major... kind of, well, Not major negative, but I've mentioned that the... the um, the controls are a little bit fiddly and you have to kind of get be at one with the game to get the most out of it but it is once you're into that flow it is great fun to play um there's you can flip off walls there's tons of like little zip line things that you can grab onto the slowdown feature is invaluable um the, the different types of weapons are good fun to experiment with them i love the shotgun just getting up close just one shot in people absolutely devastates them highly stylized of the art and the the graphics and the sound and all that good stuff story throwaway garbage but wasn't trying to be anything other than throwaway garbage so you let off for that and in all honesty it's it it was what i probably was expecting from the trailers that i played the only thing i would say is i never was as good as those trailers were i don't know if that's that i don't know if i can ding the game for that but the, the stuff they're doing on them trailers i i would i don't know who's managing that but i'd i'd I was pretty awful in, in some aspects, slow, methodical. Um, but having completed it and you know gone back to a couple of levels, it does, you know, it lets, lets the reins off a little bit when you know that you've already had the game beaten. But um, good fun. Like, it's short. Maybe, could you say it's a bit pricey at £15, 50 or £16 UK pounds for four hours, you know, four, let's say four and a half through once and then challenge to do better the next time out i don't know it's hard to tell now what well, it's because we've moved away from this pound an hour currency to that don't work time. i don't want 50 hours of assassin's creed i think it's time in it <laughs> so have you enjoyed that say five hours yeah right done it, isn't it but i would have been annoyed if it was 40 quid so there is a, there is a balance well yeah I mean, that's what we say. There's no, we say, well, it doesn't matter if you enjoyed it, but there is a certain time when you go, hang on, that's, that's too much for the time. So the, we've not quite got the algorithm down to that yet, but <laughs> we'll, we'll find that, I think, in the future. I, I, I just think it's um, content. So I, I don't think you, you want enough content, but you don't yeah. want that content then to be locked behind level walls or anything like that. Yeah. So I think it's basically the answer is you can get what you want out of it. Yeah. It is what I expected. I can't mm. say it was any 
any worse than what I was, it's better than I probably thought it could be because there's always a chance that it was going to be just impossible to control. It's far from that, and like I said, just get in a rhythm with it and you'll 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 have fun with it. Excellent stuff. So I think that quite neatly brings us on to the old official dimp score and grading. So, Mister Apps, what do you give this game? I've been arming and ahhing over what to do. Um, I feel like, although the controls are, are fiddly, they're, they're serviceable, they're not bad, they're just a bit of a pain in the backside sometimes, and that might be down to myself and you know my poor abilities. Um, I enjoyed the game. The narrative, like I said, is, is far away, but it was, it was what it was, and it wasn't in the way of things. Interesting game to, to play through good fun throughout the entire experience and i will go back and switch that on definitely in the future so it's a solid eight out of ten silver seal of approval for my friend pedro nice so that's the highest one for a little while isn't it yeah because they're just they're playing to the strengths yeah they're not they're not trying to change well this it's a new franchise but they're not trying to pretend not adding fucking Leveling to this because it'd be a disaster. They're not doing nonsense to it. It's they've had a vision of a enjoyable two D game, shoot 'em up with all sorts of explosions and slowdown, all this good stuff, and they've just delivered on what the the trailer was to me. So often you get caught out. You watch these trailers and go, "Core," cool. and you play it. Yeah. And you go, Hang on a minute, <laughs> that's not what I saw. Dead Ro- is it Dead Rising? No, Dead Island. Watch the trailer for Dead Island. It's this emotional, gut-wrenching trailer. You play the game. It's nothing like that. There's no, uh, there's no level of, you know, sadness in that game. It is a real, sort of a misleading trailer. Whereas in this case, all I had to go on was really the trailers that I'd seen and the little bit of gameplay I'd looked up, and it delivered on that, and I could play it to a reasonable standard. So I was happy. There you go. I'd be too critical of that. No. Um, so we'll we'll benchmark our score against uh, some of the more popular, should we say, um, outlets. Um, PC Gamer with their odd uh, out of a hundred rating, give it an if, eighty-one. If you click View All, yeah, it'll take you to like the top ten. Yeah. If, you want to, if you want to bin off those Eurogamer fucks that exactly what I'm going to do it's literally what I've got in front of me they're not getting selected anymore shame they're, gonna they're, give they're, the score. they're repping us Euros and they've been binned but. Yeah. so they're dead now so we're doing PC Gamer um, 81 out of 100 the only problem with this screen doesn't tell me who from bloody PC Gamer has done this no, it doesn't. On, on my Which is irritating. Way. But breezy fun that also rewards combo chasing mastery. Barrel through the story once for a laugh, then replay the best levels until you are John Wick on a skateboard. Quite like Probably. that. Probably. Yeah, that is a, a good way of um, describing it, certainly. No um, skateboards, though, that I remember. Yeah, there are. There are. Are there? So, yeah, you can. Uh-huh. It's, oh, there's tons of. Like, I don't want to. Like, you jump on a skateboard and then go through the level on that you can jump with it you can you can kick the skateboard up and then kick it in the air at someone and kill them that way you can throw a frying pan up in the air and shoot that and it will disperse the bullets at an angle so if someone's sort of around a corner you can do that so as well as like the 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 smashing through at speed you've got these other elements so you've got the the skateboard for example for speed then you've got these other little smaller elements to sort of outwit your opponents and use the tools around you so there's a lot of creativity in the game as well that's one thing that i hadn't mentioned is that you can if you've got a, that sort of mind where you can work out physics and angles and whatnot you can you can do some really interesting and fun stuff yeah sounds sounds good uh mitchell mitchell saltzman at ign uh 8.5 out of 10 Excellent action leads the way with my friend Pedro. Although there, this is such. Po- I mean, these people, are bloody journalists, basically, and they're <laughs> wording stuff like this. It's just frigid English. Excellent action leads the way with my friend Pedro. 
though instead of although, which is poor English, though there is little reason to return after its short campaign. Not necessarily sure that's true, Mitchell, but it's you're the nice. gamer, you're the reviewer, not me. No, that's, that's not really. I mean, I'd then query the score then. That's higher than if something that's not worth returning to when it's only four hours long. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, Mitchell? They really do please. some odd stuff at times on there. Um, Javi Gwaltney from Game Informer. Going on the panel, Game Informer. Is it? They are owned by GameStop, yeah. which are the American version of Game, basically, for people over these, just to give people a little bit of insight. And GameStop are going through some hard times. Retail sales are falling, all this good stuff. Um, and Game Informer were funded by a GameStop, so they've had some layoffs over there. So oh God. Young Javi might not be part of that crew anymore. I didn't see who was and wasn't. Mm. I, used to, I used to quite like Game Informer because they had a good set of people there. And because they were, they are, or well, still are, like a, a the, not the sole, but a, a big player in the retail space for games, mm. they would often get quite good access, like early access to games in preview states. Like I remember them probably about, eight months before Days Gone come out, they got like an hour's worth of footage with the Days Gone developers to show the game off, which mm. no one else had, um, because obviously they wanted to try and promote it with Game Informer, who affiliated with the stores, but they may be on borrowed time, it would seem. They may be dead by the time this, not physically, but the outlet may be dead by the time this goes live. Interesting. Um, but anyway, old Javi gave it six out of ten said my friend pedro is a fun little bloody romp that gets tripped up too many times by its frustrating controls oh, no wonder they're going down the pan with that sort of shit review <laughs> next <laughs> so <laughs> next one uh we'll do game spot james o'connor seven out of ten my friend pedro is a stylish and inventive arcade shooter that provides plenty of joy but isn't as groundbreaking as it initially seems Fair. I don't think it is groundbreaking, really. I mean, it's not much out there like it, but it's not going to change the landscape of video games. I mean, it's, it's strange what... they give it that groundbreaking title because you go, well, Red Dead Redemption 2 is brown- groundbreaking in a lot of ways, so why is this getting compared with... Why is that labelled up there with groundbreaking? Yeah, and if you strip odd. it down to its lowest form, it's using bullet time, which was in Max Payne 2001. Yeah. So... <laughs> I don't think they were ever preaching that it was groundbreaking, but fair enough, James O'Connor. It's disappointing. I mean, I like seeing the Metro one. They're normally a dose of reality, but maybe they didn't review this game. They probably would have done. I'm just going through it to see if they did, because I like their... I mean, we're a big fan at Dim Digital of the Metro gaming. Atkins loves them. Yeah. Well, I'm on page three out of five and ain't there. No, uh, well, trouble. Yeah, that's a bit of a stinker. Some of these I've never even heard of. Rectify no. gaming. Nah, it's a lot out there, isn't there? Anyway, you get the picture. It's a bit of a mixed bag. It's generally scoring high with a couple of blowers. But there what you did go. score as? It's uh, what's the name? What overall? Yeah. Uh, eighty. 80? That's pretty yeah. good. 81 recommended. There you go. Yeah, pretty good. I'll complain about that. Yeah. 8 out of 10, basically. Do it. So, there we go. Let's 8 it. out of 10, in, it's hard to... Because if you compare it to a, a proper AAA game, people are going, what's going on here? How's, you get, how's that 8 out of 10? But Yeah, but it's 8 out of 10, 10. You can only judge stuff by what's put in front of you. You can't judge it. You can't compare... An 8 out of 10 AAA with an 8 out of 10 that some bloke's done in his shed. Wow. And it's done on price and budget. That, that does help. Output. Just got to, people get a bit worried, though, didn't they? They see they see the likes of Smash Brothers getting the same score and they go, oh, Smash Brothers must be a 10 then. And you go, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Judging Reasons by different standards. Absolutely, individuals. There you go. We'll shut this down now. Yeah, I think it's the right thing to do. So we'll see you guys. Ah, oh, chucked it again. Uh, next time. So <laughs> thanks for listening and ta-da.